So me and ChatGPT had a great conversation today of, hey, you know what? Give me about three to four business ideas that me and Moose can break down on how we can start them, right? So everything from food critic, shout out to Keith Lee, to everything from a subscription box. We have all these types of of, uh, business ideas that hopefully you can either be inspired by or that you have one and you may learn a thing or two of how to have your business correct or how to brand and and market these particular ideas. So, Moose, are you ready? Because I'm excited about this. Yeah, no, let's get it. I got some of my data, you know, tabs up. I'm uh, I'm ready to go on this. All right. So the first business idea. So this is how we're doing it. We're going to do idea, mission statement, and target audience. Okay. So the very first business idea, uh, a gourmet food critic. Taste Horizons by Chef uh, Marco. Shout out to Chef Marco, this imaginary chef that we have. The business, an online cooking academy, exclusive recipe book, and a series of pop-up dining experiences. Mission statement, Taste Horizon by Chef Marco is a culinary adventure, elevating home cooking to art and creating unforgettable gastronomic experiences. Wow, okay. Uh, Target audience, food enthusiasts, home cooks, aspiring to gourmet standards and culinary adventures seeking unique dining experiences. Now, Moose, if Chef Marco came up to you and was like, I got this idea, here's my mission statement, here's my audience, what am I supposed to do to make it into a true business? What would you tell him? Of the top 10 most watched videos on Instagram, food ranks as number seven, all right? So so it's one of the most watched categories on social media. So I think this, like the food space, and think about it. I mean, there's so much, so many, obviously we're going to have to eat food, right? But we all eat food. That's that's one thing. So that, that helps you. You got 7 billion people on the planet that are going to want to eat food and obviously learn more about different cuisines, et cetera. What I like specifically about this business model though is, you notice there is the online uh, opportunity, there is a book, so there's a print opportunity, and then there is a live experience. So you look at those as three different revenue streams to, to really help drive income to the business. The main thing that I would tell uh, is Chef Marco. Yep, it's Chef Marco. Chef, chef, the, first, for, the main thing I'm telling Chef Marco is how are we getting people to learn about you before we can even get them to purchase into the online, purchase the book, or even attend one of the events. I think that's the main thing. So that is essentially when you look at any business model really, but more specifically this one, when you look at uh, how the business is gonna perform, it all depends on where your customers are coming from. So just in a in a quick nutshell, yeah, I, I like the three I like the three main streams though. That's that's a good that's a good setup. Which one do you feel he should concentrate on first? Mm. What is the quick small that's win? I, th- I would yeah. I would say what would be the quick small win to build momentum mm. to then build out the rest. Yeah. Well, you, you know what the cool thing is in a space like that, if if you can really get out and shake some hands and kiss some babies and build relationships with unique whether it be vendors or event spaces or whatever the case may be, you can or you can bring, let's say that that gourmet class, or you can bring it to somebody else's audience mm-hmm. and have them follow you online. So I would even I would even suggest that. I would suggest if like if you still gotta, and I, I'm curious to know how you're gonna give the branding tips to get this thing going. But in the beginning, I would say, man, get out into the streets, especially if you're in a big city. I don't know where you might be, mm-hmm. but if you're in a big city. Get out into the streets and think about who are the top maybe 10 or 20 people that I can collaborate with, right? They already have a brick and mortar space. They have the, they have people coming for whatever reason. Can I collaborate maybe with someone who does, who has an art studio? Mm-hmm. And you ever, you ever attended one of those like painting with an instructor? Yeah. It's like they used to do like paint and wine or something. It's like, hey, can I have a session? Hey, can I, can we collaborate? And we do the first half this. And then the second half, instead of people going out to get a bite to eat, maybe I'll just take them through a gourmet cooking class or whatever it is. So now, you know what I'm saying? Like you're starting to build that audience. So when you say, hey, follow me online, then you take Brand- Nikki's branding tips and you start, you know, keep, keeping the relationship spinning there. So I, I would honestly think that the, the quick win is collaborate with someone who already 
has the space and an audience, people mm-hmm. coming in, and then you can you can start building from there. Hmm. Okay. I like that. I like that. When we're talking about the branding and marketing side of things, I'm going to go first. I'm going to go content because instantly, if we think about all the food stuff that's happening, what makes you different? And so one of the things that is said was like, yo, the the audience is home cooks aspiring to be gourmet standards, right? So one piece of content that you could create is how do you turn an ordinary dish into a whole gourmet luxury situation? So now you're like, how do you make the typical peanut butter and jelly look fire, right? How do you turn the regular spaghetti and meatballs, stuff like the ravioli, uh, Chef Boyardee situation. People, this is where you'll get your customers, not your customers, your audience be like, yo, get the Kraft mac and cheese. Kraft mac and cheese? Do something with the Kraft mac and cheese. Do something with uh with spam. Spam. Like do something hmm. with, like, and you're allowing now your audience to be involved as far as what am I cooking up today to where now, if you're going to say, One of the things is going to be uh, an online cooking academy. Now people are going to want to know, hey, how do I do that? Right. Because you're not showing them per se how to do it. You're not slowing it down, giving the ingredients. You're showing peanut butter and jelly can now look like boop, and you're doing it in, in a time lapse. Now the online stuff is going to come up. Right now, another piece of content is going to be the gas, whatever, what those things called gastronomic, whatever, gastronomic stuff. You're now showcasing how to do that. That may be a little bit more of a tutorial to where now you're showing I'm going to do this, this pop up experience in New York. Boom, boom, boom. Here's going to be the menu. Boom. You only get to sign up if you are part of the text message situation. Get into the text message. I'm going to share the location and the first people to drop their deposit, you know, get inside. Right. But you're showcasing that, like, if I was thinking about doing a pop up experience, I would set up those things like, okay, here's what's possibly going to be on the menu. Then I would find the location and it would be blank. And then I'll snap and then you see it, all of those creations and then snap again is gone. Pop up experience, text a number. So these are just some of the things that you could do from content ideas. But when we're thinking about branding and we're thinking about those people that stand out in the food section, what is going to be your saying? What is going to be the thing that we hear? Of course, Keith Lee is trending. So you think about, you know, I got it. I tried it. It was going to rate one to 10. His hand situation before we known him for sitting in his kid's chair. What is going to be your saying? What is going to be your mannerisms? Right. And you got to think about, of course, you know, it could be also your, your gear, that whole nine. But what is your saying? What is the gestures that you're doing? If you taste something, if you create it, you taste it. Are you doing this same face, same sound every single solitary time? Like you're like, mm-hmm, right? I know I say it's going to do something. But, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm saying like, if, if we are creating all these different pieces of content, are we making our staple sound? Are we making a, a staple gesture that no matter what, if they go to his pop-up experience, now everybody is going, mm-hmm, right? right? Something to right. that effect. And that's now being recorded for extra content. So Chef Marco, or for the aspiring uh, food critics, chefs out there, uh, that's for y'all. I like this. It's fun. Second one. Now we're going in a little bit into software. Mind Body Digital, a health and wellness app. Mission statement to revolutionize personal health by offering accessible, tailored wellness and fitness guidance through cutting edge technology. Target audience, health conscious individuals, fitness enthusiasts, and anyone seeking to improve their mental and physical well-being through 
technology moose mm. business wise what do you that, that's 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 a heavy highly competitive yeah. situation super. there yeah super yeah now this is definitely one of the more competitive spaces but i still think that there's always room to win to this or win with this depending on who you aim to serve right now just some quick numbers on this uh 350,000 apps health and wellness apps mm. on the app store right now Mm. All right. So ju just as you gear up to go into this 350,000 similar apps or just apps in the category on the app store right now, 90,000 released just in the last year. So that's I mean, that's that's a lot. Right. It's just a lot of competition. But, you know, let's say again, and, and we probably need to switch flip flop and have you start with the branding first, because really it's more about driving the audience and the traffic first and then doing something with the business model. But if, if you want to know one of my favorite business terms, uh, you, you, you can just make note of this, right? The first one is uh, MRR, monthly reoccurring revenue, mm. right? That's one of my favorite business terms. One of my favorite business models, period, right? Anytime, it's, it's like real estate, but for online businesses or software products or apps or things of that nature. It's the same concept. That's the, that's the main focus, right? I think when, whenever you enter into the software space, you have to think about what is going to be your essential, essentially your revenue model. Are you looking to first offer the app completely for free and then yeah, allow users to upgrade or access the more premium features for an upgrade, which unlocks that number that we're looking for or that term, that MRR, that monthly reoccurring revenue? Because Ultimately, it would be a subscription to them. Uh, is it? Is it? Are you doing a combination of maybe ads, and you're saying, "Hey, I'm going to allow other brands, like uh, I don't know, other fitness brands, like a Nike or with sports apparel, or I don't know, what, whatever it is." Mm -hmm. Are you looking to allow them to advertise on the app? So you're saying, "I'm going to do a combination of ads with the subscription to drive revenue." You know, I. I I hate this, but I, I hate that I'm focused on this, but I don't hate that I'm focused on this because it's it's a core part of the business when you start thinking business and you see me just kind of going to the revenue component of it because th th that's going to be a primary feature. Another thing too, and, and even to take a couple steps back, not to dive right into it right away, this might be one of those things where you have two unique opportunities when you think about developing this. Mm -hmm. There are some apps that will allow you to, especially for the fitness space, by the way, they will allow you to basically borrow their app and white label it to your brand. So you don't have to spend tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars to have to come up with your own one. Now you're limited in your functionality there, but you might be thinking, no, I want to really stand out from the crowd. Like I have some things running in my favor, I have some momentum. I really want to do something that takes our brand or our business to the next level. So you might want to go this route of developing your own. Now, the one thing that I will share here, and I love that it was talked about on one of the, the latest EYL clips I saw, actually, where they say you want to be mindful of who you pick when you're allowing investors to come into your space right, or, or mm -hmm. to invest into your companies because you don't pick investors for money. So I actually learned about that through like an online incubator. I was like, yeah, this is the most genius thing I've ever heard in my entire life. I thought you get investors because you need money. You need to raise money to help you to fund your business. That's, that's the number one reason. It's like, no, that's part of the reason. Right. A bigger part of the reason is because they're going to help you to meet new people, whether it be networks, you know, uh, uh, of, of other individuals and also helps you from a marketing standpoint, depending on who you partner with. Right. So anyway, just a couple of different methods come to mind when I think about anything SaaS or software related. It's number one, are you going to just take something that already exists, white label your stuff onto it, your brand, and just go with it with some limited functionality? Are you going completely on your own? And rather than maybe investing all that money up front, you want to go all out and seek some funding. And then, of course, on the revenue side, are you going MRR, you know, monthly reoccurring? Are you doing free to paid? There's there's some options there, but definitely there's a, you know, there's there's some questions that we need to talk through when we come up to this space. I like this. So yeah. here, how do you make it into a lifestyle? That's my thing, mm. right? How do you make it into a lifestyle? Like, like you said, there is a lot of wellness, every fitness type of app. And what some 
concentrate on is the different programs it has inside of it and maybe the cost of it. And you never want to focus on that because people don't necessarily care. You have to show how it is part of their daily life and the transformation they are going to have by using this particular app. If I was to talk about as far as the content that should be created is how is it being used throughout the day? Not just one part of the day, which is the gym or when you have to work out, right? In the morning, is there something for them when they reach their phones? If we know a lot of people, the first thing they're going to do is grab their phone. Is there something that is going to pop up or make them want to uh, open the app? And whether it is something as far as a mental check, whether it is a breath work, whether it is an affirmation or a reminder of their health stats in the beginning. Like, how are you showcasing throughout the day what people need because of that app? That it is not, and it's not focusing on when you're looking at the content, it's not focusing on the That's app, great. it's focusing on the person and how their day is going. From a person who is balanced with their fitness and wellness, how does that look like? And how is it being used? How is the app being used throughout the day? So when we look at, an, of course, a Nike, a Nike doesn't promote sneakers. The Nike doesn't promote the clothing. Nike doesn't promote any of their products. They promote the athletes. They promote the lifestyle of being uh, an athlete. You want everything that's part of that lifestyle. If I want to be an athlete, if I want to be in shape, if I want to be a LeBron, a Serena Williams, anything, I'm going to want to wear what that is because right. it's it, it symbolizes greatness. So your app or whatever that you are utilizing should symbolize what they want to be. What is the transformation that they are trying to have? And your content showcases that. So never focus on the actual product, the actual app. Never focus on what inside of it as far as it has all these different exercises and this and that. You're showcasing the person, your your group of people, because maybe you're showing and this is wearing, uh, you know, be inclusive comes in. Is it for kids as well? Is it for 70 year olds? Is it for the the teens that are coming up? College people like you have to figure out. And they said the audience, but you also have to figure out what generations this is for and how is it used in that generation in this time that we're in. So that's what I'll say. Yeah. About that one. Now, I think we, we we have time for one more. We got time for one more. So Moose pick. Do you want the subscription box? The travel blogger? I'm 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 gonna make you pick from two because the other one is a wellness coach and we just did the wellness app. So yeah. subscription now, box. Let's do the subscription box. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, let's so, do the subscription box. Subscription yeah. box, hobby box, which is a niche subscription boxes. Mission statement to deliver passion to your doorstep with curated collection for hobbyists and enthusiasts. I wish they went more into detail with what, but that's cool. Uh, target audience, individuals with specific hobbies or interests looking for a monthly discovery of a new product and experiences. Go. Yeah. So first off, uh, one of, can I can I just say one of the most difficult businesses to run, right? I, I, I'm, I'm just going to say that. Right, a subscription box. You're talking about having to fully develop the entire product cycle, customer acquisition, and the operational fulfillment of that. There's a lot that's happening here. So I wouldn't suggest that anyone start here. I would suggest that they add it to a, port, a component of their brand if it makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. So I just want to put that out there as a I'm disclaimer. On. But again, let me just start he didn't with some he stats. Didn't, he didn't, th this person, he or she, or they yeah, yeah, did he's, not he's, get yeah. you before they started. They already kind of started the business. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. And and, and I don't I don't mean to uh, walk them back out of that uh, dark hole, me I if can't you will. Do it. I do it. <laughs> I gotta do it. That part. Oh man, no. I'm just I'm just looking at this because I said what I, I Google this. I said what is the subscription? Uh, what is the success rate 
of subscription boxes. Trasho. And it said, yeah, bad, bad. <laughs> it's about like 10, 10 to 20%. But here's the reason why. And I think from a business standpoint, you can always, uh, if you get this part, I think essentially it will help you to have this particular idea succeed for you over time. One of the biggest reasons why it's difficult to maintain a subscription box as a business is because of the churn or what they often call the retention rates. Mm. So if you're bringing customers in, but you can't keep them for a long enough period of time, you never really reach that point of profit on the boxes that you're sending out. Because like I remember this, I, I want to say maybe, it had to be a long time ago, 10, 10 years ago, mm-hmm. there was a subscription box that sent clothing out to men every month. Mm-hmm. And you, it's, it, they, they branded it or marketed it for the person who doesn't like to shop, but is adventurous and wants to still look good, but doesn't have the time to go, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't know if it's still around today. Honestly, I forget the name of it even, but I can imagine you're not profiting on every single box that you send out, especially in the beginning. Like there might be a 90 day time period that you, that you need to run for before you start entering the green on some of these products. You got to think about what are the things that are going to keep your people subscribed. I mean, that's that's the whole thing. It's another it's another one of those business models that's great. You got you got monthly revenue coming in for you. It's it's great, but if you don't retain the people, that's where you're going to face some some serious challenges in, you, in keeping the lights on for an extended period. So, because this this one is a little bit open right? As far as what's inside of the box, what Mm -hmm. would you be interested in as far as a subscription box? So maybe it could help tailor like, okay, if you do this, you could definitely like market, not market, but like make sure that these particular products, there's certain levels to it. Because like, for instance, like an example, I'm going to stay with the bare brick kind of vibes. Okay. Shout out Mm -hmm, to Bear mm -hmm. Bricks. Y'all should just send me stuff, even though you're like overseas. There would be like different tiers to the subscription box. If one subscription would be, you would get a blind box every single month, right? So now you're you're excited to see which one that I get because I could get a really expensive one or I can get, you know, it's just it's just one of those things. Then you have a level two where like you are going to get an exclusive joint that is trending at the moment. The level three, you get a super rare joint that no one necessarily gets, right? Like it hasn't even dropped or whatever. Like they just have those different types of connections. I- I'm saying to you, what would be, uh, what would be in the box and would you suggest those types of levels or, you know, how can they make more revenue than just saying, Here's a box. Here's the price for the mm-hmm. box. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I like I like the idea that you mentioned, especially if let's say you are a uh, again, just to, to go back on the the the, co- the concept that we just spoke on on health and wellness. So let's say you have supplements, you have a supplement line. Yeah. Those supplements are going to be, let's say, consumed for the most part together as a unit or collectively every month. Mm-hmm. And so if you know people are using the products monthly and and that's a that's a whole nother conversation, but let's just assume that they are. Yeah. You can do exactly what you just mentioned there. I'm going to re-up your order. And I think there are some there are some there's a portion of that. I, uh, what is it? Amazon, uh, Whole Foods or Fresh Food. I, I think Whole Foods does it where it says, oh, you can reorder your last cart. Yes. Or something like that. I, I, I get it from time to time on Amazon. So that that's almost the same model, right? It's like, hey, we. You purchased these groceries last month. We're just going to assume that you're going to need them again this month or this week, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So that, that that fits in that category. It fits in the category that it's a reusable product. Mm-hmm. But in the case of the blind box, that's how I was introduced to subscription boxes. It was items that you don't know what you're going to get. You know the category. Yeah. For example, there's one with clothing. I think there's another one actually with cologne. So they give you cologne samples. Now that's interesting, right? Because I mean, how many, I, at least for me, I know with my colognes, there's a, there's a, there's a number of colognes that I use and I'm going to really just reuse them on and on and again. So that's a, that's an interesting category, but I think ultimately it comes down to the type of products. I like the clothing one, although I can see why they decline because online shopping is so 
it's so common now that it's like, why would I want someone to pick out clothes for me when I can just shop online? That's that's the same exact thing. At that time, you know, the uh, the online shopping wasn't really as popular. So I, I know I, I don't know that I answered the question really, but I'm just thinking about all the different categories, you know, that that come with it. But I I can see the the standard, the elite, or the premium in something that is reoccurring. I'm not mad at that. I think audience. I'm I'm I'm, I'm always going to go with audience experience is the way to go when it comes to subscription. And so what I mean by that is if we look at a crumble cookie, right? Mm. And we, there's a show that, or a, a video that always comes out announcing what the new cookies are going to be. Where the people are locked in at a specific time, you know, uh, uh, the specific day and we're seeing what it is. And then we're going to go get it. They, they change it every week. Now, your subscription box may be changing every single month. What is what are you doing to bring up the hype? But then also, uh, instead of just the watch party of like, yo, here's the release of this month's stuff. Now you're also bringing in as far as the shipping experience. Yo, order 472 your box is on the way let me show you what's in the box this month boom you get this you get this you get this and then also to encourage you know other people to join the subscription what is your bonus thing right what is the new bonus thing that people and you pick a few orders that you have and it's like yo and i'm gonna throw in Ah, every person who orders in the next so and so for a subscription box, you get, and there's a week that's always of a bonus. And so you're rewarding people to become monthly members, right? Of course, thinking about the subscription, because sometimes from, from a, a tier situation, some people are like, ah, I just want that month. Like, what do I got to do for that month? So I'm actually surprised you didn't say, yo, up, up that price for that month, right? Mm -hmm. um, oh, like a one time. Yeah. But in my head, if you was to do that, that's after like you would put a deadline of when you accept monthly new monthly people. So like, let's say from the first to the 20th, you could bring in new monthly customers. But the 20th to the end of the end of the month, then it's a up price, uh, up price for that particular box. You didn't get the box. Cool. You still have a chance. Da -da -da -da, right. But inside of that now you're showcasing yo these are the people from a content wise these are people who still got the box we're going to throw in uh this amount of of uh savings if you get the subscription so now mm -hmm. you have a code and it, it'll vary this person got 10 20 50 percent boom 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 right with the content you're always one showcasing the what's new Two, showcasing the, the shipping experience and, and, and boxing it up. Three, user-generated content. So when other people are showing what they got, they got the box, that whole nine. And, and thinking from a branding standpoint, what is going to be that Instagrammable, that social media-ready unboxing moment? Like, don't just, if you're doing a subscription box, don't just put it in a UPS, USPS box here you go. There has to be something when we're thinking about the branding side now that makes people want to take out their phone. So th that's a that's a packaging situation or a special uh, item situation that instantly I'm thinking I'm not doing this subscription box until I can understand what my Instagrammable moment is going to be, what my story moment, my social media moment going to be from a product stance so that's, that's, that's what good. i would suggest yeah that's good that's good listen people give us our ideas we may do this again because i mm -hmm. i think it's fun i think it's fun yeah um coming up with random ideas here's here's your business structure here's your branding and content side boom run with it and if y'all like these ideas and you actually run with them tag us be like yo i started a subscription box I know, Moose, you said not to. However, comma. But prove way, you wrong. The, no, the way that you explained it. it made right. me believe that I can do it. I mean, I got an app. The way you suggested it, Nikki, made me increase my downloads, 
buy this much. I'm just saying. Just let us know. That's just dope. let us know. Yeah.